Hello, this is Dr. Trevor from physicsthisweek.com. Today, let's talk about conversions. And in particular, we're going to look at ways you can convert between different units of length. Uh, but we also can do this for mass and time as well. Uh, and we also want to take a look at whether our conversion is actually reasonable and correct. Okay, so this is a typical conversion factor that you might see where you have uh, one unit or one length uh, related to another length. Now, because these things are equal, that means both sides are the same. The numbers are different, but the unit here uh, is going to make sure that uh, we know which one we're talking about. Now, if we take one mile and divide it by one mile, of course, we get the number one. Now, some textbooks talk about the magic of number one, and some different people talk about the magic of number one. It's not really magic. The, what happens is the number one is actually the multiplicative identity. That means that if you take one times a number, you get that number back. Or if you take a number times one, uh, you get that number back. Multiplying by one doesn't change the value. It might change the way that it looks. So if I divide one mile by one mile, of course I get one. But if I divide 1.609 kilometers by one mile, I also get one. If I do the opposite, if I take one mile, divide it by 1.609, and I do that for the other side, I also get the number one. So with these two things, if I multiply them by anything, I don't change the value of it. So if there's a particular length, you know, I've got two markers along the road, I don't change anything about the distance between the two markers. What I change is the units that I'm looking at for those, uh, for that distance. So let's take a look at an example of a 5K race. And I'm going to do this to two significant dig digits. So I've got actually a 5.0 kilometer uh, race. Okay, if I take that, multiply it by one, again, it's not going to change the distance at all. But if I put in the conversion factor of 1.00 miles divided by 1.609 kilometers, and generally, I want to use the four-digit conversion factors if possible. Uh, if you look in the back of your textbook or the front of your textbook, you might find it out to nine or ten decimal places. Usually, four is sufficient. Doing it to one or two usually isn't quite enough. Okay, now just rearranging this a little bit, I realize now that I've got a fraction. I've got a kilometers on the top in the numerator and a kilometers in the bottom in the denominator. So I can cancel those two things out. And if I put that through my calculator, putting in 5 times 1 divided by 1.609, I end up with uh, 3.108. And I might have additional uh, factors there at the end, um, but I'm only drawing at this point the four significant digits. And now I want to round that down to the two significant digits that I started out with. So I've got 5 kilometers is about 3.1 miles. Okay, now it might not be exactly that. Because a meter out here at the uh, 1.609, that 9 is you know down to 9 meters. But if I'm running a 5K race, people don't really care if I have to go a few more feet uh, to get into the parking lot where I'm going to end this race uh, rather than end it in the middle of the street somewhere. Okay, but to two significant digits, 5 kilometers is uh, 3.1 miles. This is what we just did, but if I do it to two significant digits, notice now that I've got 3.125 uh, miles is equal to five kilometers. When I round that down, um, I get 3.1 again. And this calculation over to the right is just the same calculation done again, uh, but with the four significant digits. So notice at the end of the day, I've got my 3.1 miles is equal to 5.0 uh, kilometers. And to two significant digits, it doesn't matter which one I used uh, up above. There will be times, though, you have to be careful with this. So it's always a good idea to use those four-digit conversion factors where possible and then round uh, at the end of the day. Okay, now there are a few conversion factors that you really should know. And if you're taking my physics class, uh, you absolutely have to know them. They will be on quizzes. Uh, but the first one there is 1.00 inches is 2.54 centimeters. Now that's actually a definition. Notice it doesn't go to four significant digits because um, the people who brought us the metric system decided that that would be the actual conversion between the two. And so that's kind of a, one of those that's written into law. 
The one below that, the 1.00 miles is 1.609 kilometers. Again, sometimes you might see that as 1.6, and sometimes I will actually use it as 1.6, but usually you want to go to four significant digits. Now, the other two are the one minute is equal to 60 seconds and one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Those are ones that doesn't matter what unit system you've been using for most of your life. You should realize that uh, you already know those two. So there's really only two new ones here that you need to, to know. Now, one of the things that will help you do better with your conversions and make sure you don't make mistakes is decide or is realizing which of the two sides, or excuse me, which of the two units is larger than the other. So I've drawn this kind of to scale. Uh, 1.0 miles is 1.609 kilometers. Well, that is obviously longer than one kilometer. In fact, it's about 0.609 uh, longer uh, if you have a mile as compared to a kilometer. That means that if I'm changing a distance in miles into a distance in kilometers, I'd better have more kilometers. And if I go the other way, I've got some unit or some distance that's measured in kilometers and I'm converting it to miles, I'd better have a smaller number. So if you think about these uh, different conversion factors, get them into the back of your head so that you can look for that type of thing to help you make sure that you've got the right spots, uh, the right uh, unit in the right place. Now, the question that often comes up with these things is, do you multiply or divide? And the beauty of using the system that I just showed you is that you don't have to really think about that. So I've got uh, one mile um, divided by 1.609 or 1.609 divided by one mile. So at the end of the day, when I'm doing it, you know, do I put it in up front or, you know, upside up or upside down for that? So what I want to do is I want to write down the unit or the measurement that I'm starting from. So the five kilometers, and then I'm going to divide that um, by kilometers. So I know that the kilometers has to go on the bottom so that I can cancel those out. Whereas if I do it the other way, my kilometers, I've got kilometers on top twice and I end up with kilometers squared per mile. And I've got two signals that this is not quite right. One, I went from kilometers, I'm trying to get to miles, I didn't get there. So my units are telling me that I've made a mistake. The other thing is, I know that the kilometer number should be bigger than the mile number. So uh, going from five to eight is a signal that, again, I've done something wrong. So I've got two signals there that tell me that I haven't put my number in the correct way. On the left-hand side there, you can see that the units cancel out very well, and we've done that problem a couple of times already. We know that comes out to be 3.1 miles, which meets the two conditions. I have both the right unit and uh, the right scaling factor that goes into it. I've got five kilometers. That is some number less in miles. Okay, so as a quick review, there are a handful of conversions you really should know by heart. Most of the other ones you can look up uh, as necessary. And when you're doing these conversions, they involve a special uh, version of one where you take one side divided by the other. And it doesn't matter which one you do, as long as you divide both sides uh, by the same thing, you get one. And then you're going to multiply that one and you want to put it in such that the, the units that you're trying to get rid of actually cancel out. And again, you should use at least four digits in your conversion uh, and then you can round your answer at the end of the day. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you need more help, you can visit me at physicsthisweek.com uh, where I have all types of uh, videos up like this. And I'm always adding more as we go. Good luck in physics. Have fun this week.